Hey Kings and Dragons, Ryan King 551 here. We're doing a different type of video. This is the college football playoff type video where next year there will be the 12 team expansion. I wanted to give my take on it as I did a report on it a while ago for school. And I wanted to talk about a little bit of the history of it from this article that I have here. And then I gave my own opinions in my report and stuff. So first off, in this article, it says, I'm just going to go over some main points. The college football playoff replaced the first true, um, though in perfect postseason football championship arrangement in the history of the NCAA highest division, the Bowl Championship Series, which is the BCS, a system instituted in 1998 that produced a national championship matchup based on a combination of computer rankings and polls. It's not perfect, okay? Now... As a result, many seasons ended with split national championships. Um, so with that being said, here's a list as a couple that were split. Uh, 1954, Ohio State and UCLA. Uh, 1957, Auburn and Ohio State. Uh, Alabama and Michigan State in 65. 70, Nebraska and Texas. 73, Notre Dame and Alabama. 74, Oklahoma and um, Southern California. Uh, 78, Alabama and Southern California. Um, 90, Colorado and Georgia Tech. 91, Miami and Washington. 97, 98 was really the first year that it was fully integrated into its full establishment of it. Uh, so with that being said, Michigan was in the APA rankings and Nebraska was with USA Today and ESPN. So both of them got the national championship, even though... It seemed like Michigan had it with the Rose Bowl. And then 03 and 04 was the last year with Louisiana State with the BCS and the S Southern California again with the AP. And then from onward, uh, Texas, Florida, Louisiana State, Florida, then Bama in 09, Auburn in 2010-11, 2011 and 12, Alabama, 2012-2013, Alabama, and then 2013, 2014, Florida State, right before we got the um, this, where it says national championship determined by various polls until the introduction of the BCS system in 1998. BCS system replaced with the college football playoff system in the 2014-2015 season. Southern California won the BCS championship, but had its title stripped in 2011 because of rule violations committed during 2004 and 2005 seasons. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much all I have for this article stuff. Um, so yeah, if you know, guys, if you look at these years, there's a there's a lot of Michigan championships, there's a lot of Big Ten championships. So I'm sorry, SEC fans, but you've only been relevant since the college football playoff four team format. Prior to that, you were not as relevant and um and stuff until you're relevant for um five decades. Then call me and stuff, and until you the team behind me, the Michigan Wolverines, until you have a thousand wins, which we're about to have with, with 11 on our roster. Not the point. Point is, let's move on to this format. So this is what I said in here. The college football playoff has existed for over 90 years. College football has become more competitive over the years since only four teams make the college football playoffs and get to compete for a national championship. Teams actually do not um, make the playoffs based off the performance they have during the season. The technique that is actually used is that a committee will select the four teams based on their schedule and committee voting. So at the end of the day, you could go undefeated and not make the college football playoff. Getting into the college football playoffs is not just determined by a record, which sucks at times because it should be not based off strength of schedule all the time. I don't like strength of schedule as much as I once did because there are times where, okay, you lost by two points to that team, and that's why you're not in. Or it's like, well, oh, okay, you, you're all, the only win that you have as a top 10 opponent is when Michigan beat Penn State last year before they beat Ohio State. Since it first began in the 1920s, the college football championship was determined by various polls of the Associated Press, United Press International, and college football coaches. In 98, is when the BCS, which is the Bowl Championship Series, determined the national championship solely by using computer rankings and polls. The fans and analysts stated that this was not a great system, 
and it came under much scrutiny, suggesting that this system did not give a clear-cut champion, which is true. For example, the first year the system was invented, one ranking website said that Michigan was the national championship champion, and another ranking website said that Nebraska was the national champion. In that year, the committee decided to give both teams a national championship. So, again, not perfect. It was not until 2014 when the BCS format was terminated and the committee finally decided on a champion by using a four-team college football format, which actually works better still to this day because you get those teams and yada, yada, yada. The evolution of sports management for this championship is interesting. Initially, it was very informal based on various polls only. Next, the BCS system added a more formal structure but came under attacks including corruption and bribery scandals. The management for these playoffs is currently done by a committee that determines the best and strongest teams to get into the playoffs. For example, if Michigan were to play a hard schedule against teams like Notre Dame, Alabama, and Clemson, etc., Michigan should or would be considered for the playoffs. However, if a school like Rutgers were playing against weaker teams such as Army, Navy, and Boston College, then they probably would not or should not be considered for the college football playoffs because they are playing weaker teams compared to who Michigan played. And even if they both went undefeated for the whole season and Rutgers played a weaker schedule, that's where Michigan should fall. What I found interesting about this article is that the committee decides whether the school makes it or does not make it into the college football playoffs. So your record does not matter. Um, so your record does not matter, not but not as much. Uh, I mean, so I'm sorry. So your record does matter, but not as much due to other key factors, such as schedule itself and the committee deciding whether you made it or not. So I'm sorry, I struggled on that a little bit. I had to reword, re, um, sorry, reread my words when I wrote that. Anyway, the current college football playoff system is done using a four-team format, with those teams basically selected by the committee. There are 10 conferences in Division One football, which is over 100 schools, yet only four teams make the playoffs. Now, here's the thing. This is before the 20, um, this is before next year's season when I made this. It doesn't really seem fair, does it? How can only four teams make the playoff? Yet in other tournaments, such as March Madness for basketball, 68 teams make those playoffs, or the NFL has 14 teams make the playoffs. It really makes no sense for the college football playoffs. The first change I would make if I was a general manager um, is to increase the number of teams in the playoffs. Actually, as of right now, the NCAA has decided to expand the college football playoffs to 12 teams as of early of 2024, which is coming soon, guys. I really like that they are going to expand the playoffs. However, I personally do not think this is what I thought. 12 teams uh, is um, I don't think 12 teams is enough for the college football playoffs. If I were to make changes um, and if I were the general manager, my first change would be to expand the playoffs to 20 teams. Now, I know you guys are saying, whoa, that's too many. 16 is a little too many. Yes, but that's what the video game is going to have. You can probably expand from 12 to 16. This way, the way this would work would be taking the two best teams from each conference, as there are 10 conferences in Division I football. Now, first off, you would have to get rid of the divisions altogether. My second change would be taking away some of the power the committee has on deciding who makes the playoffs and who does not. The way I would decide on what team makes it would be based off the records, taking the team that wins the conference and the runner-up that is right behind them for each conference is the way I would do it. During the regular season, a team with um, will play 12 games. For example, if the Big Ten and SEC conferences have a team that goes 12-0 and undefeated for the season, they will make the playoffs because they win their conference. Now, if a team goes 11-1 and and they are the runner-up, they will still make the playoffs because they are the second best team in that conference. The only problem with the... Um, Deciding to expand the league to 20 teams is that we would still have to look at every team schedule to determine the seeding for all teams. What I mean by this is that there will be 20 teams. However, determining who gets the number one seed all the way down to the 20th seed will be based off the strength of everybody's schedules. So there you go, guys. So 10 conferences. Here's a quick, here's an outline that I have. I know it's up. I know it's probably looks weird in the camera. Um, but yeah, so. Big 10, two teams, one and two, SEC, two teams, three and four, Pac-12, um, five and six, Big 12, seven and eight, ACC, nine and 10. Um, what did I have there? Pacific, PCC, 11 and 12, 
And then these were just like other ones that I just wrote down. Like if they were real conferences, like I just joked around like this. So I said, oh, red 13 and 14, orange conference 15 and 16, green conference 17 and 18, and black conference 19 and 20. The point is, is that the reason I give it 20 teams is because, and then also I know a lot of people would be like, well, would you still have that big 10 championship and stuff? It's like, should I? Because if Ohio State and Michigan play each other and Michigan wins, and then they, would they play Ohio State again? Or would they still play a big West team? Because that's the problem. You would have to, you can't take the runner up. It doesn't make much sense at that point. So you would have to take someone else to play Michigan. You've already solidified yourself as the number two team in the country. And if Michigan were to lose to a 10 and two team, they would still solidify themselves as a number one team in the country. Uh, I mean, number one team in the conference. I don't know why I said country, but I meant, num- you know what I mean, in their conference of the country. And I don't know. Ultimately, I just think that this is the way I did it for my school report. I hope you guys liked my take on the college football playoff. I think it's really going to be interesting when we have um, home field advantage for teams. Imagine playing a game in um, Penn State or Michigan or Ohio State or um, MSU if they become really good again or Maryland. You're going to play in a cold environment so those southern teams are going to get their butt handed to them and sent home packing and then if the southern teams get to host they're going to send the northern teams packing what goes around comes around and this is where it's going to be really really awesome to see these southern teams struggle in the colder environments because they're not playing there and stuff they're going to struggle more whereas the Teams that play in the North, for the most part, have warm weather in the beginning of the season, but then get cold weather towards the end, whereas the Southern teams always have warm weather. So it's definitely going to be an interesting environment. That's all I got, though. Until next time, guys, don't forget to stay radical. I'll see you next time. But this is how I would expand the college football playoff.